It's all the same. I just, at this point, still struggle to sort of see the point. It doesn't feel like a car. You expect more from the brand. Hi. I think it's been a very interesting year. We've seen a lot of new EVs. A lot of electrification. More electrification. I think I'm just mentally not ready for electrified vehicles. Even though I'm all for electrified vehicles, I think it's important. It's important for our children, our children's children. And nothing period. It's important for technology to evolve. Technology! But I realised that I think mentally and emotionally, I'm still not ready for electrified vehicles. Eventually, we'll all have to adopt to it. Some brands are doing it quite interestingly, especially Toyota. So the BZ line of new cars is something exciting to look out for. The other big story, obviously, is that prices have gone up as well. As long as the supply remains very low and the demand is like that high, it will always remain expensive and a lot of new car buyers or would-be buyers are just priced out of the market and even when they turn to the pre-owned market, it's just not easy. Electrified vehicles? <laughs> <laughs> You're obviously getting more SUVs. The market still wants crossovers and SUVs. That's what we're just gonna see more of until buyers get tired of them and demand something new. Some surprising comebacks, Volkswagen and Arteon. Combi RS from Skoda. The R8, the new last R8. Certain things that you think they wouldn't do, they do. I mean, cars like the MC20, cars that you wouldn't think would be made in 2022, but they have been, so that's nice, that's good to have. I think my least favourite car. In this day and age, it is very hard, I would say, to make a bad car. Based on what we would expect from today's cars, we are all into modern tech. Things to make our lives easier, buyers have expectations, so we want more from our cars. Least favourite car of the year? Unfortunately, would be Aston Martin DBX 707. The i4 M50, actually. My least favourite car, cars, are basically all the high-performance EVs. You have your EQS 53, your i4 M50, your RS e-tron GT. And it's not because they're bad cars, they're very, very good cars. But I just, uh, I'm still struggling to see the point of them. And I think that's really because your base cars, right, they're already so good. And these um, high-performance models, you're just getting a lot more performance. And I think they don't differentiate themselves enough from the base cars the same way a typical, for example, the typical AMG or M will have a much bigger engine, a, a, lot, a lot more noise, that kind of thing. So I think they struggle to, to, to stand out in that sense. And I just, at this point, still struggle to sort of see the point. Why, why, why do you need that much more power? It was a very capable car, but it just felt like there was just too much power for the car's own good. And I thought, it, it could just be me. Like, maybe it's because I'm a bad driver, so I don't really know, honestly. But I didn't quite enjoy the car as much as I thought I would. I suspect it's because I had too high an expectation, you know, and then when I drove it, I was a little bit disappointed. I was hoping to see more from the, the Forester I drove this year. There were upgrades, like there were some minor tweaks to like the exterior. It's not a bad car. It's smooth, it's quiet, it, it, it cruises very nicely, but you expect more from the brand that I expected a bit more. I've driven it a few times. It's a fast car. It's a nice BMW. You walk through it, it lights up, laser lights. But every time I step out of the car, there's this feeling of emptiness that I can't quite put my hand on it. It's incredibly quick, incredibly sleek, but it doesn't feel like a car. More so than something like any other EV. My most favourite car of this year is actually the Audi S8. It was a fantastic car. You get into it, everything is quiet. You hear the rumble of an engine and the quattro system just makes it a ballet dancer and just fantastic. I'll go with the Polestar 2. The Polestar 2? I think it has to be the Nissan Qashqai. The Nissan Qashqai was very impressive. It looked good both inside and out. It drove really well. It was a big leap from its predecessor. The moment I saw it, I, w I walked up to it, I was like, this car looked it looks very handsome. There's a panache to its styling. It's one of those cars where I guess it's, at least for me, I think it's a just enough or good enough car where it's, you know, your electric range is good enough, your price point is okay, the car is luxurious enough, premium enough, you know. And I think it's what you want from an everyday family car, I guess, you know, 
practical big boot, easy to drive, it looks interesting enough. I like the cabin, I, I think it's quite nice. I like the whole sort of vegan aesthetic. They put a lot of thought into it. How you, you get in, you don't turn it on, the seat senses your weight, and you get in, engage drive, and then you just go. The infotainment, the design is it's just so well executed. That, that's how it is today. It's all about the user experience. If I had to buy a car, that's probably the one I would buy. More realistically, it would have to be the Kia Niro. It's a fantastic upgrade and a lot of features inside it. Looks great and it has hybrid system. And can't wait for the EV version to come out. What is the car that surprised me? Let's see. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. I'd probably say the Eto 3. New 7 series. Toyota Sienta. New Sienta upgraded so much. Honestly, before I got to drive the car, I kind of thought that uh, it's a Sienta. It's a mini MPV. MPV that's not really that big. But the new Sienta, I'm honestly blown away by how much I like it. New interior fitting. Did not expect that from Toyota at all. And overall, just such a cozy car. It's one of those things where you don't really have any expectations, right? With most cars, you have a lot of, sort of history, a lot of expectations, you know, previous generation models, predecessors, like kind of thing. I guess with the Eto'o 3, you don't really know what to expect. And I guess I was surprised, like, the car is actually really, it's actually really good. Initially, from the photos, I took one look and I'm like, my God, the car looks angry. It looks like it's just pissed off at the world. But then when it was launched and I walk up to it, and you notice details like they put Swarovski crystals in, into the headlights and it's quite pretty. But what surprised me was I didn't think that BM would make a car that was this quiet. I think I was I was driving all the way west to all the way back east. All I heard was my music. I could barely hear the rain. Can't even hear the the, the splashes of the water as you, you go over the puddles. And I thought, wow. I, I can't believe they've made it this refined. Okay, but to be fair, I think the Nissan Qashqai was a very surprising car. Again, I don't know, is it because I had low expectations of the car? When it over-delivered, I just felt like it was just... I think it succeeded in many fronts, not just in terms of dynamics, in terms of placement of buttons, how everything was there, steering especially. It was just a very well-rounded car. A car that I would genuinely consider to buy if the price is right. Oh, I, I think it will be the 911 Dakar. The 911 Dakar. It's a weird car because it's a 911 made for off-roading, which sounds completely mad, but I think it's therefore very interesting. The new Mercedes SL, in a way, it's one of the Mercedes flagship models. So flagship models are always interesting. You're going to see some new tech. I like to drive the R8 before they take it out. I like to see the Ionic 6. That is a crazy looking car. Korean cars, Korean supremacy. Another car, I, I would say the Nissan Aria. We've seen photos of it, we've seen videos of it. There was that nice commercial showing how the electric all-wheel drive system can prevent the, the jerkiness when you come to a stop. I think if you look it up on YouTube, you see how they use the mechanism to deliver ramen. I think in terms of the design, the tech that's been shown in there, I would be curious to drive it. I like to see some more brands put out fantastic cars that aren't EVs. Well, I like EVs, I will buy an EV eventually, but I'm still loving the ICE engine, your V6, V8. Maybe not just V6, V8, bring more wagons to Singapore, please. More wagons, nice cars. I don't know if I still want to see more electrified vehicles and all the hype around it. I suppose we'll have to face it. It's, it's, it's inevitable and we'll have to accept it. Even if EVs are supposedly the way forward in the future, I just hope that there will be car makers that continue to give drivers and consumers a choice. It may not actually suit everyone. The next big thing that I'm curious to see is how more drivers come to terms with going electric because it's a, it's a big change I think for, for most drivers who are very used to, to how they use their cars going electric it's, it's quite different so I, I'm curious to see how people adjust to that and how I guess the, 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 the country as a whole so facilitates that change. So there you have it guys thank you very much for watching the video also thank you very very much for supporting us past year. It can't be possible without your help. Keep following us 
Let us know down in the comment section below what else you want to see us do in 2023. Please continue to share the videos with your friends and family and do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Those of you who are watching who are not yet subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you will be alerted of all our upcoming videos. And also follow us on TikTok. We are at SG Karma. You can find our latest happenings there. I wish everyone a happy new year, good health. Health is wealth, everyone. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. <sighs> what do I hope for in 2023? I hope for a pay raise. And yeah, have a look here. We are. Okay. <laughs> okay. Also comment in the comment box below and let us know what you think about this video. What are your cars that you feel the most interested or the least interested and whatnot. Sorry, I was just thinking what to say and I don't really know what to say. <laughs>